everybody, Gina DeLuca here. Okay, so today I'm going to be playing around with the stretch chameleon cells, and I will be using the Rain-X glass water repellent, the original formula, with the intent of creating some jellyfish looking things. So typically, um, when I use the Rain-X with Floetrol, it makes these flowers, which are really cool, but when you stretch them, they kind of look more like jellyfish. Um, so I'm going to play around with that, the colors that I am working with. Um, so I'll pull this one out. These three, uh, this is phthalo green and phthalo blue, and just phthalo green and blue. This is the phthalo green and blue with some Liquitex Basics Titanium White. Same here, just more white. This color here, this much deeper color uh, that is not in that same hue family uh, quite so much, is uh, Prussian blue hue. So I did add a bit of the uh, blue-green mixture to the Prussian blue. That pulls those colors in together a little bit, but I really wanted to have a blue in there that stood out against the other blues, so it kind of creates this sense of depth. Um, it, it just feels deeper and farther away. Anyway, uh, that's my thought behind that. We'll see what happens. Prussian blue, I have found, can be kind of unpredictable um in in pouring um you know i i haven't had much luck with it for straight pours it kind of just seems to take over everything but even if it does take over i'll be using the rain x and the rain x is going to push that layer away and it's going to pull those other colors up so that's my theory we're going to experiment today that's what's happening. These paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. And that mixture is then thinned with uh, my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol uh, until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is. <laughs> Satchmo is in his box. Uh, that's what, what he does. Uh, so <laughs> this is about a two and a half on my consistency scale. It's a little thicker than a two. You could call this a two. It's a little thicker than a two. So kind of in between two and three. You want it to make a nice, thin, even stream off of your stick. If it gets thick and then thin, you need to mix some more. Have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube. That gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint, brand, color, consistency, the recipe, the, of course, the technique, all of the things that I can't fit on a card. Uh, this is the picture of the painting in that particular video. This box here contains a tip for this particular technique, and this down here is the color palette that was used in this painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette. You can build off of those two colors. Uh, and there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors, mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. Okay, I am going to put some paint in this cup. If this were a straight pour, I would fill my cup last, but it is not, it is a flip cup, so I do not mind if it sits. I'm going to start with a bit of this lightest color. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to start with some of the Prussian blue. 
have that darkest color sitting on top. Whatever color is at the bottom of your flip cup is going to be the color that is on top of the puddle. Um, that's going to be the last color that comes out. So what I want is to make these jellyfish appear out of these dark waters. So if the dark colors are sitting on top and then I put the rain X on and that should bring the lighter colors up. That is my theory. That's what I'm going with. And that is how I will be layering these with that in mind. Another thing too is what ends up in the very, very center is going to get stretched. So whatever ends up on the outside of the ring is going to get tilted off more than likely. actually going to just cover that whole area there all right now I'm going to put down my base coat as you can see I have already covered my edges when I uh, am using a base coat that is colored especially if I'm using Floetrol I like to paint my sides ahead of time I just find it to be helpful um, because if it's thin on the sides, the full trawl doesn't necessarily give you the best coverage on the side. Sometimes the canvas can show through. So if I'm not using white as my base coat, then I will just in an act of precaution, uh, cover those sides so I don't have to touch them up later, especially when I'm using custom blend colors like this, trying to match this exactly would be a challenge. And I want to lay down a base coat because I want these paints to slide around easily and evenly as I spin or stretch, whatever the case may be. Something has to stick to the canvas first and if it is not your base coat, it is going to be your poured paint. And then you might lose some cool stuff on the edges that you might otherwise be able to keep and do something cool with. It limits your options. So I like to troubleshoot before there's trouble. Y'all can cross that off your bingo card. And I'm just gonna flip this. Um, yeah. Just be brave. Let's make a mess, shall we? That's cool. <laughs> that just popped out. That'll probably get spun off, but you know I'm gonna be putting a drop of rain X in there anyway, just to see what happens.
That is a bubble that doesn't want to pop. Huh. Those are some stubborn bubbles. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna give this a lift. And going to put some of this excess on the corners that can really help later on. The corners are the hardest to get coverage in general. So, I like to aid it however I can. And then I'll just lay the cup on its side. So if I need to access some of that later, I can. I also have some paints left in my cups here, so. But I don't think it's gonna be a problem. ever get this out of my way. Okay. So I'm just going to center this a little better. So when I do spin, it spins more easily. I just have a little lid here. I'm going to squirt some Rain-X into it. Uh, so I'm just going to dip my skewer into the Rain-X and touch it to the painting. And it will create the cells. It will grow as I let it sit. I was actually kind of hoping that more of this Prussian blue was going to show up. C'est la vie. And I don't want to fill this up with cells. I do want to leave some space. I am going to put it in some places where I'm assuming it's going to get spun off. Yeah, now see I said that the Prussian blue reacts kind of strangely sometimes. I put some rain X there and it's like the Prussian blue came to the top instead of pushing the blue away. And that's very interesting. Duly noted. Yeah, this Prussian blue is not reacting the way these paints typically would. And the longer I let these sit the bigger these cells will get. And then when I stretch them, they will get even bigger and they kind of start to get a little wonky. Um, if I push the canvas to one side, 
it will pull that side more so it's not as even of a stretch and kind of will pull that particular side which can have some cool effects Hmm. If I touch this a second time, am I going to regret it? Will it do anything? trying to pull up something of what is in the center there like an underlying layer I do avoid touching the canvas with my skewer because I don't want the rain -X or silicone or whatever I'm using to touch the canvas because I don't want it to push the paint away from the canvas. Well, I'm not quite getting my uh, reaction that I was going for. I think it's the Prussian blue. I will have to do this again with just the Liquitex. Um, I mean, with the uh, Thalos. I love the depth that the Prussian blue gives, but it is very quirky with how it reacts. Let's see if I can try to bring up something. I just put a little dab of paint there and coming back. We'll see. We'll see if that does anything. Okay. I think I am close to being done. A couple of smaller ones. So the longer I let them sit, the bigger they get. So the ones that I stretch um, after they've had a chance to grow, they'll get really big. The ones that I do just when I'm, just before I spin, they'll stay on the smaller side so I can kind of get a little bit of variation in the size. So it looks like the jellyfish are different distances in my mind. Theoretically.
Okay, I think that's it. That feels good to me. One more. Oh, that one gave me the little flower. There's probably no Prussian blue in that area and that's doing what I would expect it to do. Okay. That's why it's an experiment. Okay, let's give this baby a spin. And remember folks, we don't have to spin fast. It will get there. If you have ever had a painting that was not level, you know how much it can move over time. Wake up to a completely different painting. Some of them are starting to look a little jellyfishy. These are bumming me out. Not gonna lie. I wish they had a little more something going on there. Just dead center and nothing happening. Okay, let's see if this does anything. Another drop of rain X. So the ones that like kind of closer to the edge, they wind up with more of that jellyfish effect. Okay, well, I am either going to complete ruin this or not hmm do I need to dip do I need to dip in the paint So the ones that already kind of look like the jellyfish, I'll make them look more like jellyfish. <laughs> and the ones that look like they're swimming straight up, um, I'll figure something out. So this one. Can get some tentacles.
This one looks like he's got a little direction going on. And it can just be like a suggestion of tentacles. It doesn't have to be super detailed. Let's see, can I? infer that it has direction can I make it do what I want okay not too bad if I can make it appear that that center is more to one side than the other, then I can give it direction. I think that, that works. All right. Learning as we go here, right? Okay, okay. This is gonna be a long video, y'all. <laughs> but if that is what it takes to get to where I need to be to be happy with this piece, then that is what is happening. I'll just kind of bring it in a little bit. Design-wise, you can see I make if I make the center, like the center of the jellyfish, that body part, off to one side, I'll make the little flicks in there shorter because that's the opposite side, and these will be longer because that is the side that is most visible. And when you make your tentacles, think about how they would be pulling in the water. It's very subtle the tentacles. I don't want them to be too in your face. Okay, let's see. This one I can give a little bit of love. Again, just 
dipping into these drippings here. some darker okay So now I'm going to zhuzh up some of these and just make it appear that we are seeing the top view. So live with that. So let this be a lesson in persistence. I didn't get exactly what I wanted at first but I thought about it how can I get what I want and just make it happen I think this one that one looks like it wants to go this way
All right, I'm gonna leave this alone. I messed around. I got some ideas. Um, yeah. Well, I guess I gotta finish these two. It can't be the only two, right? And that, my friends, is what you call OCD. All right, done, leaving it alone, gonna walk away. Uh, I am gonna clean up and I'm gonna bring in for a close up, back in a few. Okay, here it is. Some of the jellyfish turned out better than others. Like that one came out pretty cool. These two came out kind of nifty. This was an experiment, you know? Can't expect to hit a home run on your first swing. Got to warm up a little bit. But there it is. Hopefully uh, this gives some folks some ideas, different things you can potentially do. Give me some ideas. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, if you are subscribed, please make sure you have clicked that bell so you are notified when I put up some new content. Do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. Uh, you will also find in there my affiliates. Um, if you use the links in the description box, I receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. And there are coupon codes for my affiliates, like DecoArt. And several others, Amazon. You can buy a washing machine off of Amazon and I get a commission. Doesn't cost you anything extra. <laughs> Somebody did that once, that was awesome. <laughs> um, also in the description box, you will find the link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale and of course the cards are also on amazon and this is dry by the way okay. not to say that this is fully dried um is that it oh uh you'll also find the link to our facebook group go make some art join us there post your masterpieces ask your questions get some inspiration a good time is had by most it is the internet after all. Okay. Well, I think that's it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art. <laughs>